Real Housewives of New Jersey star Dina Manzo probably can take a sigh of relief because her ex-husband has been sentenced to seven years in prison after he has been accused and convicted after hiring a mobster to attack her then fiance. Sean Diddy Combs' legal team is asking for the alleged victims in his case for their names to be revealed so that he can prepare for trial. Welcome back to the Kempire Channel, your number one source for pop culture news and music, entertainment, reality TV, and so much more. As always, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on breaking news when we go live or when we upload. So before we get to this prison conversation, let's just let you guys know, London, we will be coming to your city officially in December. Tickets go on sale for our first Kempire After Dark international live experience presented by AEG. More information on that will be available in the description. And if you are in LA, Los Angeles, we will be there November 20th at the Bourbon Room. Come experience the final US tour date of 2024 in Los Angeles on November 20th. More information on both dates will be available in the description. So as you know, we've been covering this Real Housewives of New Jersey story for a while now. So I had to give you guys an update in some shape or form. So I wanted to let you know, I'm not going to go through all the nitty gritty details. If you miss any of the backstory on how Caroline Manzo wrote a character letter for her now convicted brother-in-law, and that might be the root of why Caroline Manzo and Dina Manzo don't get along and why we understand why Dina would never see it for her sister ever again. So our friends over at the Associated Press let us know that the ex-husband of Real Housewives of New Jersey cast member Dina Manzo was sentenced Tuesday to seven years in prison for hiring a reputed mobster to assault her boyfriend in exchange for the defendant hosting a lavish wedding reception for the attacker. A wedding reception at the Brownstone. You remember, if you're a Real Housewives of New Jersey fan, then you are familiar with the Brownstone and who owns it. Caroline Manzo's husband. Thomas Manzo, who's 59 years old, of Franklin Lakes, will also have to serve three years of supervised release once he's freed under the sentence imposed by the U.S. District, District Judge Suzanne Wigginton. A federal jury in June convicted him of conspiracy, falsifying concealing documents, and committing a violent crime in aid of racketeering activity. And at that time, we told you that he was facing like 40-something years in prison, so he actually lucked out. According to federal prosecutors, Manzo hired John Perna, whom they described as a soldier in one of these mafia families, to commit the July 2015 attack in which the boyfriend was beaten with a weapon. Perna's wedding reception was held the following month at a restaurant in Patterson. The Brownstone that Thomas Manzo partly owned, prosecutors said. Perna pleaded guilty in December of 2020 to committing a violent crime in aid of racketeering activity and received a two and a half year sentence. He was freed in August of 2023. Dina Manzo's boyfriend is now her husband, as you guys already know. So according to page six, they said the U.S. Attorney's Office for the District of New Jersey announced in a press release that Thomas Manzo was ordered to serve, quote, 84 months in prison for hiring, then assisting a soldier in the Lucchese crime family to assault his ex-wife's current husband. So this is what the U.S. Attorney uh, Philip Selling Selinger said. He says, whether you're actually in the mafia or not, hiring the mob to assault someone because of your marital problems is abhorrent. Covering up the role you played only makes it worse. The jury's verdict in today's sentence makes clear that this office will spare no resources to hold accountable anyone who commits such crimes. So at this time, Dina, who's 52, has not publicly commented on her ex's sentencing, but did post a cryptic quote to her Instagram story on Tuesday. In the quote, it says, because at the end of the day, the right people fight for you, Caroline Manzo, the right people show up. The right people care, not only when life is convenient, but when it's difficult and messy and it aches all over. So in a statement from the FBI's Newark field office, James Dennehy says this. He says the facts and circumstances in this case read like something from a bad TV crime drama. But the evidence and the testimony presented in court proved it was a reality. 
I don't know if this provides any solace to Dina Manzo, who left New Jersey many, many years ago and is living a fabulous life with her now husband in in California. So if anything, we wish them nothing but the best. And Caroline Manzo, ain't no good gonna come to you. Speaking of ain't no good gonna come to you, Sean Diddy Combs. So John, Sean Diddy Combs is demanding that the names of his alleged victims be released so that he can prepare for trial. So page six says that Sean Diddy Combs, the legal team, wants the names of his alleged victims to be revealed so that he can prepare for trial. On Tuesday, the rapper's lawyers hit back six lawsuits that were filed against Combs the day prior, accusing the disgraced hip hop mogul of a range of sexual crimes. According to the court documents obtained by page six, including Mark Agnafillo, Tenny uh, Garagos, Anthony Rico, uh, Alexandra Shapiro, and Anna Estavio want the government to identify the alleged victims so that Mr. Combs can prepare for trial. The Revolt Coal founder legal teams argued in the docs that their client's case is unique because of the number of individuals levying allegations against Mr. Combs due to his celebrity status, wealth, and the publicity of this previously settled lawsuit and the grand jury leaks and false inflammatory statements by the DHS agents. Due to that, Combs' legal team said that a torrent of allegations of by unidentified complainants spanning from the false to outright absurd have been filed against the dad of seven. The lawyers also addressed the, the recent victim's attorney, Tony Busby, who recently held a press conference informing the public that he was representing more than 120 victims that include men, women, and minors who have claims against Combs. So in the docs, it says, counsel for these accusers recently convened a press conference prior to filing at which he claimed to represent 120 victims or 120 accusers making outrageous and deeply prejudicial allegations, including violent sexual and sexual abuse of minors. This publicity stunt broadcast on Instagram included a 1-800 number that reportedly received 12,000 calls in the first 24 hours. Additionally, Combs' attorneys want the government to, quote, turn over exculpatory material regarding the leak of the 2016 hotel video surveillance, which showed that showed the rapper violently attacking his then-girlfriend, Cassandra Cassidy Ventura. They also want the identities of the Homeland Security investigation agents who were responsible for the leak. As you know, at the time when they were being accused of this, the... Uh, SDNY came out and said that they did not have that information in order to leak that information at the time. One man claimed that he was 16 when the Sean John founder allegedly fondled his private area during his infamous all-white party in 1998 in the Hamptons. If you missed the video that we did on this, we, we covered these four of the male victims that, that had allegations against Diddy. Combs' legal team slammed Busby and shut down the claims in the new lawsuits, telling Page Six the press conference and the 1-800 number that preceded today's barrage of filings were clear attempts to garner publicity. Mr. Combs and his legal team have full confidence in the facts, their legal defenses, and the integrity of the judicial process. In court, the truth will prevail that Mr. Combs has never sexually assaulted anyone, adult or minor, man or woman. So as you know, Sean Diddy Combs is still at the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn awaiting another bail hearing. We'll keep you posted in regards to that. But here's the thing. I feel like this tactic by the attorneys to get the names of these alleged victims, rightfully so, they want to be able to prove prove that Diddy didn't know these people. Diddy was not in the, in, in the proximity of these people. This, Diddy never met this, these people. However... One of the reasons why Diddy has not been let out on bail is because, despite why he has not been let out on bail, despite giving a $50, $50 million bond, offering up his daughter's and his mother's passports, telling the court he will keep a log of all the people coming in and out of his home, he will not allow any females besides his family come to his home. The reason why that has been denied multiple times and a lot of legal experts say that it will be denied yet again is because Diddy has a history and a pattern of coercing people and specifically witnesses. They also believe that he is also a flight risk. Although Diddy's legal team has said 
he is still trying to sell his, he's actively trying to sell his private jet. It hasn't been sold yet. Do we think that's the only way that Diddy could get out of here? <laughs> I'm just saying. Guys, as always, I want to know your reaction to the Real Housewives of New Jersey's Dina Manzo's ex-husband being sentenced to seven years in prison. Do you think that is enough? And now Diddy wants the names of these alleged victims to be revealed. Let's continue this conversation there. As always, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on breaking news when we go live or when we upload. Thanks for watching. Ooh, you bring the lighter. I got the fuse. You make a fire. I'll add the fuel. Follow my lead. Just watch the